Hello and welcome. I'm Nefe42 and in this episode I'm going to talk about a cool Raspberry Pi project that I'm doing with the Prusa i3. Okay, so if you see in the description below there is a thing linking to a uh, item on Thingiverse. Here is that item printed. So this is something that I can print and something that I can put together and I have put together already. That is a Raspberry Pi add-on for the Prusa i3 Mark III. So the, the idea is that these two holes go around here somewhere. It holds this facing either up or down. There's some IO pins exposed down here as well. And what I will do is I will plug it into the printer to allow for remote printing. Now, before I do that, I need to format the card. So we have the card here. We need to remove the card. We need to put that into the computer. And we need to set that up for uh, Ras uh, OctoPi. So I will go on there now and I'll do that. So what you want to do is you want to go over here to OctoPi or octoprint.org slash download. Download OctoPi 0.15.1. I'll just save that to my desktop. What you then need to do is go to etcher.io and download etcher. Okay, so if you see on etcher now, we have boot disk uh, G and J. They are the same volume as you can see here. It's a, it says it's a USB device. It's not, it's an SD card, but same thing. Now you want to go to the desktop, you want to get this uh, OctoPi image and just transfer that to the desktop. Now we have the OctoPi on the desktop. You can see it in here as well. We'll go to open. And what it will do is it will copy OctoPi to the generic storage device. Okay, so Etcher has completed successfully now. And if you go into your files here, um, under, oh, go down. if you go into your files here under this PC, you can see the boot drive and the J drive is unaccessible because the J drive is configured for Linux uh, or for the Raspberry Pi itself. Uh, so yeah, Etcher completed, it completed its test as well and that is all good. So we go into the boot drive now and there is something we need to do. And what we need to do is the Wi-Fi setup. So uh, there is a config file in here under Octopi Network, this one right here. Um, so there is, ah, okay, so we need to use this one instead. Um, that's fine. So we want to open that in WordPad instead because it's opened up flat. So we open it in WordPad and there we go. We have the lines. That's perfect. So yeah, so it, it I mean, it should be in here, what we need to do. Oh, it says do not use WordPad for editing this file. <laughs> oh, that's great, isn't it? So, all right, fine. Okay, so it will say, uh, put SSID here. So you want to search that and it will say there's three different places for that and that depends on the network that you use in your in your home network it will depend on the one that you need to use so we'll go back up to the top one because I'm pretty sure it is that one WPA slash WPA2 secured uh, network so I'm just going to go ahead and put this information in and then we will cut to me back at the computer back at the um, installation here's the unit again i have updated i've put the firmware on here um, i have a power cable here that's connected directly to the wall socket because i have a usb wall socket i have a oh where is it a cable here which is way too long i'll have to get a smaller cable at some point in the near future um, and i have two uh, m312s they might be too long for this, I'm not sure. But they should be fine. They should at least hold it onto the case. I'm going to mount it that way so it's face up so that I have enough space to kind of route the cable up, around, and then underneath. Because uh, at the moment, if I did it face down, there would not be very much space underneath it, I don't think. No, it would be very close. Um, so, yeah, face up plug it all in and then we'll be back okay so as it turns out I have connected this on it is not interfering from what I can tell with anything on the printer which is very nice um, 
There was a different one as well. There was two of these ones I could choose from. There's one up here and there's one down here. I chose this one because I thought it would look better. Uh, and it goes more with the actual frame. What would be an ultimate goal for this would be to make it so that this could be... The Raspberry Pi could be powered via the printer itself. I'm not sure if I can just reroute an extra power cable from the power supply all the way around to here and have a step down the same as I did in the other printers or not. Um, if I did do that, then it would be it would be really good because I'd be happy about the amount of... Um, uh, how, how neat you can make it then, which would be great. So that's... Let's go on here now. We'll try and plug this in. Okay, so now that's plugged in to itself. We have another cable tie, kind of cable tie, uh, that we can use to just secure this all together. But I don't actually know what you call these things. I think they're just cable twists. As you tie it, as you twist it, it tightens. So hopefully, you can get them nice and tight in there. Now that should be fairly solid on this side. It should not interfere at all with any day-to-day -day print stuff, uh, which is good. Um, it's kind of weird that they put the port so close to being in the way of that, but it doesn't actually get in the way of it, which is nice. I was worried that when you pull the head all the way to this side, that it would get in the way of that big, that, that really big head. Uh, but no, it wasn't too bad. So what we could do now is we can just kind of turn the printer back. And we have the Prusa printer ready for action. Now, it's not plugged in perfectly, and I could technically plug this camera into that and do some time lapses that way. So I might do that in the near future, just to simplify time lapsing um, for 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 big projects, because then it records a time lapse of everything. You know, it just makes it all very easy. In time, I will be looking to get a Raspberry Pi Pi camera. I think they call it or something like that, um, because they do look very uh, good on here. You can attach it down here and have an arm that sticks out, and it goes up and down with everything. It just looks really professional. Um, on this printer which is really good um, because I don't want to have I don't want it to be a massive jumble the same as the last one kind of was um, which is why I got the boxes for the last one the, the shielding is on this side to hide away all of that extra electronics uh, because you do need a lot of extra electronics to be able to make that printer usable this one no it's all inside that little box here you've got boxed on that side you know, the power cables are rooted underneath very nicely. Um, everything's very well hidden. There's copies for everything. Um, and it just, it, lo it looks like it and feels and does actually perform like a solid printer, which is the nice thing about the Prusa is the guaranteed quality that I have had from it so far, which is very nice. Um, so yeah, let's power this up and see what happens. Okay, so there's definitely there's definitely something going on on the Raspberry Pi. It does seem to be flashing. Um, I'm not sure if there's a test you can do from this side to see if it has connected correctly. Um, so I might have to leave that until next time. We'll see what else we can do with this, uh, if there's any differences on the Octoprint uh, menu. I'll have a bit of a play about with that and see if we can learn or if there's any uh, add-ons which can make it a very a very simplified process in order to print stuff from that interface. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And anything from Twitter that's at Ifio42. Uh, if you like this and any other projects that we've done, please do let me know in the comment section below uh, of other ones that you think I should do, or anything that can make the printing operation of what is now easier than it has been. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.